Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Discworld Noir. So today we're talking in our interrogation cell after the murder of Malachite. I'm not guilty, and I refuse to feed your suspicions and paranoia by consenting to this charade. I thought charades were a game, <laughs> like chase my neighbor up the passage. No, you need a pack of cards for chase my neighbor up the passage. Not where I come from. We tried to do you a favor. We could get you to the lawyer's guild. You don't want that, Luton. It eats you alive. You don't have anywhere near enough money to be innocent. <laughs> Haven't you got better things to do than harass me? We harass you because you is guilty. We knows you done it. That's enough, detritus. Oh. Sir? You can go. I did it right? Let's say you were everything I expected. <laughs> now go and write up the report. Not in crayon this time, please. <laughs> that should keep him busy for a few days. He may be slow, but he's not an untrustworthy killer like you. Why the personal interest in this case, Vimes? I'm sure you've got more imp- Nail me. Poor friends to do, my reasons now that you're commanded with the watch. You're not interested in my guilt or innocence. You're just out to nail me. Well. Frankly, Luton, I've got all the evidence of your guilt I need. And if I get my way, they'll lock you up and melt down the key for scrap iron. You're a bad cop, and I don't have any time for you. If you're so convinced of my guilt, why the interrogation? Nobby has this deranged idea that there might be some extenuating circumstances that we ought to find out about. It'd make everything a lot easier if you'd confess, Luton. I'm sure you had a good reason to do what you did. Let us help you. Cigarette? Holiday for two in Querms, see face in room, we pay the mini barbell. I'm not guilty and I'm not confessing to a crime I didn't commit. Listen to me, Luton. We're conducting this interrogation because I believe in upholding the law. There is no law in Ankh-Morpork. True enough, but there's my law and there's the patrician's law. Which would you rather face? What's the difference? Lord Veterinary considers it a happy state of affairs if the punishment can involve the actual perpetrator, but sees it as by no means essential. <laughs> I consider it to be absolutely essential. But you've already decided that I'm guilty. That doesn't mean I've proved it. And if I prove my innocence? That's not going to happen. Then what's the point of this farce? Smoke? <laughs> no. The thing is, Luton, we just want to find out what happened. Do one decent thing in your life, Luton. Help us close this case. Why should I? So we can close this sorry little act and concentrate on the threat to the city. The threat? The counterweight killings. Um... Uh... Alternative suspects. Surely you have other suspects for the murders I'm accused of, even if you don't think they're part of the counterweight killings. Uh... Smoke? <laughs> A set of the complete plays of Well the Dwarf, bound in <laughs> nearly real leather? No, I don't want a smoke. I want to know who the other suspects are. At the moment, you're top of our list. Although you are the bottom of our list, too. <laughs> I am the list, aren't I? Sorry. Don't apologize, Nobby. Listen, Luton. There are other suspects for the counterweight killings, and we're investigating those. But for Mundy and the Troll, you're the bottom line. Mm. That's just Horst. What about Horst? What does Horst have to do with anything? He's been watching me. He's up to something. He's always up to something. But he's not a murderer. Not by his own hand, anyway. He'd never be so careless as to carry out a murder himself. He's not that dumb. What about Al-Kali? Al-Kali? One of Horst's cronies. 
I think he's been following me. I guess I could interview him. Why do I have a feeling that you won't? Face it, Luton. You killed Mundy. You killed Malachite. And you tried to make it look like it was part of the counterweight killings. I didn't. What about Reagan? The dead dwarf? What about him? Another murder in suspicious, almost ritualistic circumstances. He's a nobody, but it has all the hallmarks of a counterweight killing. Are you confessing to the murder of Reagan? No. I'm just saying that Mundy and Malachite aren't the only nobodies to get bumped off in mysterious circumstances. There was nothing mysterious about Reagan's death. People don't just drive carriages off a bridge for no reason. He was driving recklessly across the city. It's probably just a suicide. Maybe he was just drunk. What about the bite marks? Bite marks? There weren't any bite marks. I looked. Reagan was murdered. I'm sure of it. You've got bigger problems than that right now, Luton. I suggest you concentrate on them. Um... Doesn't it make more sense that both Mundy and Malachite were killed by this so-called counterweight killer? That's what you'd like us to believe, isn't it? You make the murders look like the counterweight killings and hope to get away with it. That's it, isn't it? You're not interested in me. You want to catch the counterweight killer. You're just a low-life killer, Luton. My job is to protect citizens from people like you. What? You don't even like them much. You think they're all criminals. <laughs> Maybe, but murder leaves the place too messy. Look, Luton, we don't think you're involved with the counterweight killings. But we have to know which ones are which if we're going to stop him from killing again. This is your chance to be a hero. To help us to catch a foreign assassin. A hero? There's nothing I can do to save myself. Why should I care about the rest of the city? You were a good man once, Luton. This could be your one shot at redemption. I was never that good a shot. You ought to know, <laughs> Luton, that you are a suspect in the counterweight killings. That crowbar of yours was palace property, which means you had access to at least one of the murder sites. Oh, You're getting that's desperate, weird, aren't you? I got it from the cafe. We're wasting our time with you. Will you explain to me why you're so confident that Mundy and Malachite weren't killed by whoever was responsible for the rest of the counterweight killings? Yeah, to be fair. Everyone else has been sort of important. Mundy and the trial were nobodies. Quiet, Nobby. You're crazy. You think you've found a pattern and you're forcing everything else to fit it. We're doing our job. Mm. There we go. Nothing I say is going to convince you of my innocence, is it? It doesn't look that way. All right. Yes, I was in Mundy's room when he was killed, but I was unconscious. And yes, I was on the rooftops when Malachite was killed. Again, I was unconscious. I don't know what happened, but somebody knocked me out. And whoever they are, they're the one you should be looking for. Fine. If that's the way you want it, that's the way you'll get it. Give my regards to Lord Veterinary when your trial comes up. I doubt he'll be as patient with you as I have. The fact is, mister, that with you behind bars, the city will be a slightly better place. Oh, dear. Well, we're going to prison now. They delivered me into the hands of the palace guards, who delivered me into the walls of a holding cell. I had a bad feeling about the way things were going. Mostly people who were sent to the patrician for trial got seen right away. Rumor had it that being put in a holding cell pending trial was like being filed away in a drawer marked forgotten. And not a very big drawer at that. His face looks so disgusting. <laughs> I pounded on the door but no one seemed to care. The door to the cell was so stereotypical I half expected to look around and find a bearded old man manacled to the wall. <laughs> now I believe I remember what to do here. Oh no, it's a rat. I could find nothing out of the ordinary about the wall. The wall to the cell had a nice dank feel to it. 
I expect it was cell wall of the month in home and dungeon. <laughs> Fast little fellow, he disappeared the moment I started moving. No matter what I did, that rat was too quick for me. Yeah, I ran down there, didn't they? Didn't seem to do anything. What happens if I sit there for a while? I was really starting to hate that rat. Okay, so he went through the hole that time over there. Oh, here we go. As I worked my fingers around the crack, it became clear that the crack was the side of a loose slab. <laughs> oh, done. <laughs> The other side of the wall was another cell, but nothing like the holding cell. This was full of sketches and models, tools and materials. It looked more like a workshop, and there was someone working in it. Uh, would you like a cup of tea? Uh, no, thanks. Are you sure? Or are they not drinking tea outside anymore? Outside? The city. I take it you're from the city. How is it? The same as ever, I suppose. You're Leonard de Quirm. Yes, I am. I'd found Leonard de Quirm. The man was almost a legend. There was no disputing that Leonard was a technological genius. But this meant he was as dangerous to the precarious stability of Ankh Morpork as a compulsive smoker <laughs> in a firework factory. Rumor had it that the patrician had locked him in a nice airy cell for everyone's safety because Leonard was the kind of guy who'd light any fuse for the innocent pleasure of seeing what kind of bang he could make. The only other thing I could recall was that although the guy was hot stuff at the nuts and bolts, he was definitely at the bottom of the class when it came to thinking up names. The patrician keeps you imprisoned here, hmm? Sorry? You're working for the patrician? Uh, not really. He calls from time to time and has a look at some of my sketches. Nice man. He keeps me abreast of events on the outside. What's that you're working on? Ah, uh, this is my flapping wing flying device. I built a small prototype out of good to purchase strips, twisted tightly together, and it worked. Although not very well. Now I'm building a full-scale <laughs> model. Does it fly? Uh, not yet. But once I've solved the problem of the weight of the holding it together frame and <laughs> the mechanical faults with the spinning blades radiating from the central hub, it should do. I was having trouble getting enough force to twist the blades together, but the troll the other week sorted that out for me. Troll? Yes. He was staying in your room before you. He made this window for me so I could watch the bird. Always good for inspiration are the birds. Uh, not that I don't have enough inspiration as it is. Damn things. Just once I'd like to wake up without finding my sheets covered in sketches of novel designs for apple peelers. <laughs> Did you give the troll some metal strips by any chance? Yes. He made them into a metal hook with prongs, I believe. Uh, not one of my designs. His name was Malachite. Was it? It's possible. I never was good with names. Oh. Well, there we go, so Malachite was next door to him. There was nothing useful to me on the table. Well, nothing useful that wasn't glued down, or that I thought Leonard wouldn't notice missing. Covered with wood, wire, paints, drawing materials, sketches, cartoons and glue, the table was either the product of a highly deranged or a highly arranged mind. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay. That's how much Hello happened. again, Leonard. Hmm. Yes. Hello. What are you doing? I'm deeply immersed in a mechanical problem. Can I help? It's not likely. <laughs> I kept waiting for him to say something else, but he was lost in his work. Oh, I guess I can't talk to him. Anything else here? Nope. Useful though they are, an exit is. Well, whatever, I'll get out of it then. The gaping hole had been created by Malachite to escape from the palace. Leonard liked to think of it as a window. At that moment, I thought I heard the sound of someone at the door to my cell. My heart leapt to my throat and narrowly missed my tonsils. <laughs> I had to get back to my cell and fast. No, just run. Hello, Luton. Nobby. What are you doing here? I've come. I can't no let you go. Here. Yeah, he sent me. What happened? There's a witness to Malachite's murder. He saw the whole thing, although not very well. He couldn't identify the killer, but from the description we got from him, we can rule out you. So I'm off the hook, more or less. Vimes must be livid. I've seen him happier. But he's still convinced you're involved in this somehow. I dare say he has a point, actually. But I'm not a cold-blooded killer, whatever he may think. Who was the witness? A gargoyle up on the roof of the clerk's office on Salis Street. What did he see? I'm not supposed to discuss that with you. Come on. Let's get you out of here. You won't get any arguments from me. There we go. That was a very short jail sentence. Right, here's your stuff. Oh. Where's the crowbar? We're, um... Yeah. We're keeping that as evidence. Yeah. Right. I'll <laughs> see you around, Nobby. Thanks for coming to get me out. I appreciate it. That's what friends are for, isn't it? Friends are for getting you out of a holding cell? Could be. I ain't got that many. <laughs> you won't get any argument from me. See you later. I had the feeling that I, I had was... this feeling oh. that I was caught in the middle of something big, but I still hadn't a clue what it was. All I could do was keep searching and hope that sooner or later I'd stumble upon the truth. Well, maybe not stumble, just very carefully put my foot on it and hope the other end didn't come <laughs> up and hit me in the teeth. Well, there we go. Anyway, let's go here. But uh, I'm going to call it and end the episode because I know time's nearly up. And we went over last week. But next episode, we will go and talk to Skargoyle to find out what he saw happen. Anyway... If you enjoyed what you saw, then please like and subscribe, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.